the people who call themselves anti-theists are getting the wrong message from what Jordan Peterson is putting out there. They, they are perceiving him as a threat. They need not do that. They need not do that. He is not actually a threat. What he is doing, which you are perceiving as a threat, inaccurately, I might say, is he is giving a passionate defense of religion, a, a passionate defense of religion that is actually potentially successful. That's the threat aspect. You recognize its ability to succeed, unlike, you know, Ray Comfort style defense of religion. This one actually has legs and staying power in a modern industrial society. That's what makes him potentially a threat. But here is why he is not actually a threat. Why are you perceiving it inaccurately? Jordan Peterson is not defending the toxic attributes of religion that trigger you out. See, there's a problem with the anti-theism. And it's not a problem around the boards, it's, or it's a potential problem, let's say. Not necessarily a problem, a potential problem. Okay, I clarified. It is at root irrational. Potentially. Potentially. Clarifying it. Potentially. Didn't say it's irrational. It's at root. Said maybe. Maybe. Maybe it's irrational. Maybe it's not. Now, this gets disguised by the fact that most of the people, or not most of the people, but the people I know who call themselves anti-theists are actually reasonable human beings. Nothing irrational about Godless Cranium or Shannon or Drew. They call themselves anti-theists. But they're triggered out, the thing where they get triggered out by religion automatically, not necessarily them, but the idea that it's religion itself that is innately responsible for the toxins of religion is not actually thinking clearly on the subject. It's not clear-minded, it's not reasonable, it's not rational. Why not? Because really the better argument that Jordan Peterson is presenting, that I would tell you that a lot of people would, will start to recognize, well, will they start to recognize? The better argument, let's just say that. There are toxic attributes of religion, yes. But some of the, the, the most poisonous things about it are not unique to religion itself. They're human nature. Human nature. The tribalism, the, the reliance on orthodoxy, the looking for outsiders. People do that round the boards. You get a group of people together and they almost automatically, by nature, start to form tribal identities. Once they form a tribal identity, they almost automatically start to, to, to look for orthodoxies. Enforce those orthodoxies in each other. We're, we're like this because we all wear these shoes and we all wear this shirt and we all do this. And then they start to look for outsiders and they start to persecute those outsiders. This is human nature has almost nothing to do with religion itself. Yeah, religion may exacerbate it or religion might exploit it successfully, but it is a tendency of human nature. I've seen people do this with sports teams. I've seen people do this with the town you grew up in. The town I grew up in, we would do this. You go to the other town, Dobbs Ferry. I grew up in Hastings. You go to Dobbs Ferry, you're going to fight. <laughs> Why? Because we're from Hastings and they're from Dobbs Ferry. Tribal identity. What, what, who cares what town you're from? Well, we do. Get, we, let's fight those guys. Why? They're from Dobbs Ferry. I remember you go to the bleachers. The guy was sitting in the bleachers like, what are you doing tonight? Rumbles. <laughs> oh, he's going to fight us. Why? He's from Dobbs Ferry. Obviously, they're from this town. We're from this town. Let's fight. I mean, yeah, it was kind of play acting. We never really had any real fights. But that was the point. Once you start establishing a group of people, it's human nature to form a tribal identity. Once you form a tribal identity, it's human nature to enforce orthodoxies within that identity and look for an outsider. And then when you find that outsider, start persecuting them. That has nothing to do with religion itself. Period. Yes, religion sometimes exploits that. And the message of the Bible understood correctly as, as relates to religion, Jesus was persecuted by who? By the religious people of his day. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they dotted every T and they... Wait, do you dot a T? No, they crossed every T and they dotted every I. Sorry. Yeah, they, wait, is that right? Yeah, that's right. They crossed every T and they dotted every I. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, they persecuted Jesus, the Lord and Savior. Why? Because they were so religious, so hard-hearted and rigid in their thinking. That's what religion, that's what the anti-theists are talking about when they say they hate religion. And I'm with them on that. You know, I don't like that either. That's not the Christianity that I'm trying to build. There is also such a thing as a positive aspect of religion or the positive side of religion. 
practice correctly, you know, you, the religious person who is harmless. Harmless. Wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. You know? The religious person who, who, what does he do? He takes care of orphans and he sings happy, happy songs. Yeah, what'd you do last Sunday? Ah, I took care of these orphans and I sang beautiful songs. That's, that's really nice. Wow, that's really nice. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, you know, it's my religion, my religion tells me to do that. Now, granted, it's not practiced in a way that's, that people find positive all that frequently. But it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be practiced in a way where it's a net positive, where all you see are the pro-social benefits. Where all you see are the Christians who are building orphanages and taking care of the sick and serving soup in soup kitchens. If you have a religion, genuine religious conserv conversion, you should be more inclined to do things like that. It happened to my brother-in-law. Came out to California, became a Christian almost immediately. Went back. The first thing everybody noticed about him is now he wanted was was much more helpful, much kinder, much more compassionate, much more patient. That's what should happen. Now I'm not saying that's what does happen. I'm saying that's what should happen. No, it's not what does happen, but it's what should. So, um, to sum up this particular video, what is Jordan Peterson doing? He is arguing for the pro-social benefits of religion. He is arguing for the pro-social benefits of religion in a way that is potentially successful. This need not be a threat. This need not be a threat if you're an anti-theist. He's not telling you that rigid dogma is good. He's not telling you that persecuting homosexuals is good. He's not telling you that. He's not arguing for the toxic aspects of religion. He's arguing for the potentially beneficial and good as as attributes of religion. You know? So, that's all on that for now. Amen.